Learning data analytics is the easy part, but getting hired is where most people are quietly failing. Not because they're bad at analytics, not because they didn't study enough, but because there's a gap between learning and actually getting hired that almost no one talks about. Courses don't explain it, job descriptions don't mention it, and most people only notice it after months of effort that didn't change their outcomes. Here's the uncomfortable truth. Most people keep learning without ever checking if what they're doing is actually even working. They assume progress because they're just busy. But the job market doesn't reward effort, it rewards signals. And if you don't know what signals hiring managers are even looking for, you can follow the right path, finish all the courses, build all the projects, even get a degree, and still get ignored. So in this video, I'm going to break down the missing step between learning data analytics and actually getting hired in today's job market, and what to validate, when to validate, and how to tell early if you're moving closer to offers or just spinning your wheels. So if you're learning data analytics right now, this will help you course correct before you waste months down the road. And if you're already in the field, it will help you understand what actually will move your career going forward. So let's get into it. Let me be clear about something before we go any further. I'm not here to tell you what you're learning doesn't matter because it does. SQL matters, Excel matters, Tableau and Power BI matters, data storytelling matters. But if you've been grinding through courses, building projects, following roadmaps, that work is not wasted. You need those skills. They're the foundation. So if you're in the middle of learning right now, don't stop. Keep going. The skills are necessary. But what you need to understand is necessary doesn't mean sufficient. There's a difference between something being required and something being enough. Skills are required, but skills alone are not enough to get you hired anymore. And that's where most people are getting stuck. They think, if I just learn enough, the job will come. If I just add one more tool to my resume, I'll finally break through. But that's not how it works anymore. And I've seen it play out hundreds of times. Here's what I've noticed after helping thousands of other career changers break into data analytics. Two people can follow the same exact roadmap, same courses, same tools, same timeline, and same level of education and dedication. One lands multiple interviews and gets offers, and the other can't even get a call back. Same inputs, but why different outcomes? Why does this keep happening? Because learning is only one part of the success equation, and most people treat it as if it's the whole thing. So let me give you some more context on what you're actually up against. According to the World Economic Forum, 50% of all employees will need to have reskilled by 2025 last year. So the market knows skills matter and companies know that they need data talent. But here's a flip side to that coin. The market is also flooded with people who have certificates but lack the application. Everyone has access to the same courses now, the same YouTube tutorials, the same roadmaps, the same boot camps, and the same degree programs. The barrier to learning new skills has never been lower, which means the competition has never been higher. Today, a typical entry-level analyst position on LinkedIn can receive well over 200 applications within the first couple hours. So let that sink in for a second. 200 people, same job in the same couple hour window. And most of those 200 people have similar backgrounds, similar certificates, and similar project portfolios, similar buzzwords on their resumes. So when a hiring manager sits down to review your application, what do they see? A sea of sameness. Everyone looks the same on paper. So learning the tools just gets you to the starting line, but it doesn't win you the race anymore. Napoleon Hill said it best. Knowledge is not power. Knowledge is only potential power. It becomes power when and if it is organized into definite plans of action and directed to a definite end. I want you to really sit with that for a moment. Knowledge is only potential power. So you can know everything about SQL, you can know everything about window functions, CTEs, complex joins, but if you can't demonstrate that knowledge in a way that makes a hiring manager say, I need this person on my team, that knowledge stays potential and it never converts to results. The people who are getting hired in today's job market aren't necessarily the ones who learn the most. They're not the ones who's always the smartest in the applicant pool, and they're not always the ones with the most impressive credentials. They're the ones who validated what they learned and adjusted based on real feedback. They're the ones who figured out how to convert potential into proof, and that's the gap that no one talks about. Everyone wants to teach you the skills, but very few people actually teach how to validate that those skills are actually landing the way that you think that they are, and that's what this video is about. Now here's the mental shift that changed everything for me, and I mean everything. Once I understood this, my entire approach to career development changed, and it's the same shift that I try to help every student I come across learn as early as possible. Companies don't hire based on what you studied. They hire based on what they believe you can do. So read that again. They don't hire based on what you know, 
They hire based on what they believe that you know. And belief comes from signals. This is a fundamental reframe that most people never make. They get stuck in learning mode, believing that more knowledge equals better outcomes. But the hiring process no longer works that way. Think about it from a hiring manager perspective for a second and put yourself in their shoes. They've got 500 applications sitting in their inbox and they also have a job to do on top of reviewing candidates. They don't have time to review everyone and they really don't have time to give everyone a fair shot. They don't have time to dig into every single resume and every single portfolio to find the hidden gem. So what do they do? They look for signals. They scan for patterns, for proof, for anything that quickly tells them that this person is worth a closer look or this person isn't what we need. And here's how fast that judgment happens. A famous study by the Ladders found that recruiters spend an average of about six to seven seconds scanning a resume before deciding if a candidate is a fit or not. Six seconds, not six minutes, not 60 seconds, only six seconds. So that's your signal window. That's how long you have to make an impression. And in that time, they're not reading your resume word by word, they're not carefully considering your career journey, and they're not appreciating the nuances of your experience. They're scanning, they're pattern matching, they're looking for red flags and green flags. And in six seconds, they're making a decision that determines whether you move forward or get filtered out. So let me ask you something. Does your resume communicate your value in six seconds? Does your LinkedIn profile make it immediately clear what you do and why you're good at it? Does your portfolio show proof of real skills within the first few clicks? If the answer is no or I'm not sure, that's a problem because you might have all the skills in the world, but if your signals are off, no one will ever know. So your resume is a signal, your portfolio is a signal, your LinkedIn is a signal. How you present yourself in interviews is also a signal. Even the way that you write emails and follow up with recruiters is a signal. Everything communicates something. And here's a part that people miss. You can learn all the right skills and still send the wrong signals. George Bernard Shaw once said, the single biggest problem in communication is the illusion that it has taken place. That quote hits different when you apply it to job searching. Most people think that they're communicating their value. They think that their resume is clear and they think that their portfolio speaks for itself. They think it's obvious that they're qualified, but it's not landing. The communication isn't actually taking place. You can know SQL inside and out, but if your resume reads like a task list instead of an impact statement, you're invisible. The hiring manager doesn't see SQL expert. They just see another person who listed SQL on their resume like everyone else. So you can be incredibly qualified and still get overlooked if your signals are off. You can be less technically skilled than other candidates and still get hired if your signals are strong. That's the game today, and most people don't even know that they're playing it. All right, so let's break this down into three phases, three areas where you need to validate that you're on the right track. The first one is direction. Now, before you think about skills or projects, you need to ask yourselves, what am I actually aiming for? Most people skip this entirely and they jump straight into learning mode, thinking I wanna be a data analyst, so I'll just learn data analyst skills and then I'll apply to data analyst jobs. But that's just way too vague and vague direction leads to vague results. And when you don't have clear direction, you optimize for the wrong things. Courses completed, tools learned, and certificates earned. You can complete 10 courses and still not be prepared for the specific role that you want. And you can learn 15 tools and still not have the right combination for your target industry. Lewis Carroll put it perfectly, if you don't know where you're going, any role will get you there. So if I ask you right now, what specific role are you preparing for? Could you answer that clearly? Not just data analysts, but I'm asking for real clarity here. What industry? Healthcare, finance, e-commerce, marketing? What type of company? Startup, enterprise, agency? What problems do they need solved? Customer churn, revenue optimization, operational efficiency? If you can't answer those questions, you're just kind of building in the dark. And here's why it matters beyond focus. Being a data analyst is like saying you're a doctor. A hospital doesn't hire doctors, they hire a pediatrician, a surgeon, a cardiologist. A marketing analyst and a financial analyst both use SQL, Excel, and dashboards, but they're solving different problems, speaking different languages, and value for different things. And there's a financial case for specialization. According to Birchworks, data professionals who specialize in domains like supply chain, fintech, or healthcare see a 15 to 20% higher starting salaries than generalists. So when you're a generalist, you compete with everyone. When you're a specialist, you compete with a smaller pool and become more valuable to companies that need your specific expertise. And here's a signal that will set your direction off. You can't clearly explain why your projects even exist. If someone asks you, why did you build this dashboard? And your answer is because I was just learning Tableau or you were just following a course, that is a problem. 
You're building to practice and you're not building to prove. When I landed my first data analyst job, I did not build random dashboards. I built projects that mirror the actual work I'd be doing. Why? Because I knew what I was aiming for. I researched roles that I wanted and understood what problem that they solved. Everything I built was designed to prove I can do the specific job in the industry that I targeted. In interviews, I would say, here's a project that directly is relevant to what your team does. And here's a problem that I solved. Here's the insight and here's a recommendation. That's different from here is the random Netflix dashboard that I built while learning Tableau. One demonstrates direction and the other demonstrates you just completed a tutorial. Hiring managers can tell the difference today. Okay, the second phase is decision making. This is where talented people often get stuck. Not because they lack ability, but because they just can't commit. And this is something that took me way too long to figure out. The roadmap itself doesn't decide for you. You still have to make choices. Even with the best roadmap, you still have to decide which projects to build, which skills to prioritize, when to move on, when to go deep, and what feedback to act on. These decisions compound. Two people can follow the same roadmap and end up in two completely different places based on the choices that they made along the way. And I'll give you a concrete example. I've seen people spend three months perfecting the same dashboard, tweaking colors, adjusting layouts, adding features nobody even asked for, and obsessing over details no hiring manager will even notice. Meanwhile, someone else builds three solid projects in the same amount of time, gets feedback on each one, iterates, moves on when something is good enough. Now, who's further ahead? The person with three projects has three times the portfolio, three times the learning, and three times the stories for interviews. Jeff Bezos calls this the 70% rule. Most decisions should be made with about 70% of the information you wish that you had. If you wait for 90% or 100%, you're gonna be way too slow. So here's a principle that applies directly to projects, the Pareto principle. 80% of the value comes from 20% of the work. Spending months polishing a dashboard yields diminishing returns. After a certain point, you'd be better off starting something new. But perfectionism can keep people stuck, afraid to call it done and afraid to move on. I'll tell you about a decision that I had to make early on. When I was first teaching myself, the sexy option was data science, machine learning, neural networks, all the hype. But I looked at my background and honestly, I failed discrete math, failed calculus, and struggled with heavy stats in college. I could have ignored that and spent years forcing myself into a path that didn't fit my strengths. Instead, I made a decision. I went data analyst route because it emphasized data storytelling and communication, skills that I can build on as I used to draw when I was a kid. Now, was it optimal? I don't know, but it was clear and that clarity let me move forward and gain momentum. And within a few years, I went from delivering pizzas to six figure offers in data analytics not because I made the perfect decision, but because I made a decision and executed. The signal that your decision making is off, you're constantly second guessing, jumping between paths, never committing long enough to see results. And because you never commit, you never get feedback and you stay in perpetual preparation mode. You will never have perfect information and that certainty never exists. Make a decision, commit, and execute long enough to get real feedback and then adjust. That is how you move and build momentum. All right, quick pause. Now, if you want to land your first job in data analytics and avoid the lengthy mistakes that I did, click the link in the pinned comment where you can find the exact steps that my students use to land their job in data analytics without going back to school. All right, now let's get back to it. All right, now we get to the core of the video, the step that almost everyone skips, and that is validation. Most people never ask, is this actually working? Am I even on the right track? They assume progress because they're busy. Finished a course, built a project, updated the resume. Activity feels like progress, busyness feels like momentum, but none of that is validation. Validation is external. It comes from the market, from people who actually hire, from people in your network, or from mentors. So let me be clear about the difference. Validation is not finishing a course, getting a certificate, or finishing a project, or even feeling more confident. Those are just inputs. Validation is recruiters reaching out, getting callbacks, making it to interview rounds, removing feedback from hiring managers, getting offers, or even getting feedback from mentors. Those are outputs. Bill Gates said it simply, we all need people who will give us feedback. That's how we improve. Without external feedback, you're just operating blind and hope is not a strategy. Imagine driving a car without any rear view mirrors. You're definitely going to crash before you reach your destination. So it's time to spend less time just by yourself taking courses and not talking to people and more time networking. And here is a stat that will help you change your perspective on that. Research from HubSpot and LinkedIn show that 85% of jobs are filled through networking and personal connections. That means only 15% actually come from cold applications. 
Yet most career changers will spend 100% of their time on that 15%. That's not a strategy. That is just gambling with the very worst odds. And I learned this myself. After my very first data analyst job, every role that I landed afterwards came from networking. Every single one. I did coffee chats weekly. I was active in communities and discord groups. I posted on LinkedIn. I got my work in front of people and I listened to feedback. I knew nobody when I started, no connections and data, but I did it anyway and it changed everything. And here's another way to think about this. In software development, there's a concept called cost of repair. The cost of fixing a mistake increases 10x for every stage that it passes through undetected. Catch a bug while coding, five minutes to fix it. Catch it after launch, days and thousands of dollars. And the same applies to your job search. Validating your resume now is 10x cheaper than realizing it's broken after 500 rejections. Getting interview feedback now is 10x cheaper than bombing 20 interviews without knowing why. The earlier that you validate, the less time that you waste down the line. The signal that validation is missing, you've been learning for months, maybe even a year, and nothing external has changed. No interviews, no callbacks, or no conversations with people who could hire you. If that's you, hear this clearly. Stop adding more skills and start getting feedback on what you already have. You probably know enough to get hired. The problem isn't knowledge, it's probably just how you're presenting, positioning, and communicating your value. But the only way to fix that is getting external validation. All right, so let's tie this all together. If you've been following my content, you know I talk about the roadmap, what skills to learn, what order, and what tools matter. That's structure. Without it, you're just wandering, learning random things, wasting time on skills that don't matter. I also talk about how to navigate the roadmap, how to make decisions, and how to avoid traps. That's your operating system. Without it, you're inefficient, second-guessing everything and just spending months on one project. But this video is about something different. It's about validation, how to identify what you're doing is actually working or not. Structure tells you what to do, your operating system tells you how to do it, and validation tells you whether it's working or not. You need all three. Think of it this way, structure is the map. It shows you the terrain and the destination. Your operating system is how you travel. Are you walking, running, driving, taking a plane? Validation is checking your GPS, confirming whether you're moving forward in the right direction catching the wrong turns before you've gone 50 miles off course. Most people will just focus on the map or obsess over finding the perfect roadmap. Some think about how they travel, try to be efficient, but almost nobody will check their GPS. And that's why many just end up being lost. So the missing step isn't more learning, it's not a better roadmap, it isn't more motivation, it's validation. The willingness to check if what you're doing is working or not, and the courage to change course when it's not. Okay, so now that you understand the missing step between learning and getting hired, there's one more step that you need to get right, your projects. Most people build the wrong projects entirely. So in my next video, I'm gonna break down the exact type of project that you need to do to actually get you hired in today's job market. And if you're serious about laying a role in data analytics, this video will be your next step. I'll see you there.